you dropped nuggets, like just showered the nuggets. It was so good. Cool. Thanks. Man. So good, man. And, and just like, and just how much you like, how much you've thought about it and how deep right. the knowledge goes. People that are going to listen and be like, holy shit, like this is mind blasting. Hey, it's Joe Girard with the Sales Hero Podcast, where you're going to learn some cool stuff about psychology, influence, neuroscience, how to create repeatable best practices and systems, and building your bulletproof mindset. Today, I'm talking with Chandler Bolt from Self Publishing School. This is the one you do not want to miss. He's going to be talking about how he moved from selling completely online to adding sales teams and scaling that sales team to grow his business absolutely astronomically. So stay tuned, grab a piece of paper, and start taking notes because this one is going to blow your mind. Let's get started. All right, what's going on everybody? I am pumped to introduce you to Chandler Bolt. He is the CEO of Self Publishing School, selfpublishing.com, and the author of six best-selling books, including his most recent book titled, Publish. You gotta check that out. Self Publishing School is an Inc. 5,000 company in the last two years in a row as one of the 5,000 fastest growing private companies in the US. Yeah, baby. Chandler is also the host of the Seven Figure Principles podcast and the Self Publishing School podcast. Through his books, podcasts, YouTube channels, and Self Publishing School, he's helped thousands of people write their first book. I love following what you're doing. I love what you've been up to, man, just the journey that you've been on. And I, I know that right now, uh, based on everything that's going on, is the exact perfect time to write a book. So welcome to the podcast, brother. Hey, Joe, great to be here. Love what you're doing. Uh, lo love, I just love your style, man. Thanks, and, brother. And how you, how you do, how personable you are, how genuine, authentic you are. And so it's really great to be here. My dude, awesome, man. It's exciting to have you. I mean, we, we haven't done uh, too much of the podcast stuff in the last little while. And when you put, uh, you reached out, I'm like, oh man, let's kick this thing up a notch. So I'm pumped. Mm. So I want to start, uh, you know, we're going to keep it pretty casual. As you know, my style is not anything other than that. But uh, I want to kind of start and say, you know, tell me about your journey with, you know, what were you doing before you started doing all this stuff? What's the journey been like? Um, and where are you thinking of going with this stuff? And if you can sprinkle in a little bit of sales juiciness in there. Oh my gosh, yeah. We'll love it, baby. Sure. Yeah, let's rock for and roll. Sure. So, I mean, I got my start uh, with, I mean, I was running businesses in high school and college and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, finally got tired of learning how to run a business from professors who had never in the business. <laughs> that didn't make too much sense <laughs> to me. So I dropped out of school. Um, but before I did, and really what gave me the confidence uh, to, to drop out was I, I worked at a company called Student Painters. So if you've ever heard of College oh, yeah. Pro Painters, College Works, Student Painters. Uh, and so uh, it, it was, it's direct sales, but mixed with entrepreneurship. So I think, you know, whether it's Cutco, whether it's uh, Student Painters, whether there's a lot of internships or, uh, you know, direct sales type roles like that, that I think is some of the best one of the best things that you can ever do when you're first getting started. Now, the big difference is if you want to strictly do sales, I think Cutco and there's some other companies as well um, are, are like we hire a decent amount from uh, Family Heritage or not Family Heritage, um, South, uh, Southwestern Consulting or Southwestern Books. So like door-to-door sure. -door book sales. Yeah. Um, and then they, that's, they, that's, they use that as a recruiting arm for their Family Heritage life. And so we hire from kind of all those places. But for me, um, it was student painters. And so the difference though, is you learn the entrepreneurship piece as well, because you sell all the jobs and then you got to paint all the houses. Uh, so it's kind <laughs> you of can't a, just run away. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's, it. it's not just selling and then delivering, you know, delivering a great product. Like, Hey, here are these amazing knives or here are these books or here's whatever it's, you got to come back and deliver. So that was a crash course. And really it was a, the Navy SEALs kind <laughs> of, uh, uh, crash course on, on, or the Navy SEALs equivalent of hell week. It was yeah. that, but for business, but for seven months. Love it. I mean, and it was just sending through the ringer. So when we started our sales organization, uh, self-publishing school, you know, we, we've always been really, really good at marketing. And so everything we did in the early days that we had no sales, we sold strictly via marketing, webinars, email marketing, all that stuff. Uh, but then eventually we said, hey, we want to we go a little bit more up market and to get students better results, they need to have like we had a coaching product and we had a non-coaching product and the coaching product was kicking the poo out of everything else from a results yeah. perspective. So it's like, all right, cool. We're not going to sell anything that doesn't have 
baked in accountability and support with our team. So we're, we're going to uh, raise prices and, and increase like that kind of the level of support that we're giving people. So naturally that, you know, high, higher ASV uh, or <laughs> yeah. there's like a bajillion different ways to, to say that same acronym, uh, but AOV, ASV, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, I mean, that warranted the sales team. So one of the first things for me was, I was very intentional about, I wanted to hire a rep. Uh, well, I mean, I started with two reps, but then yeah. as we scaled our team, uh, I was very intentional. I want a rep from each direct sales uh, company that I can find um, because then you're tapping into a talent vein, right? So it. like hired one from student painters, hired, hired one from college pro, hired one from Southwestern uh, books, uh, hired gym sales, like, you know, different, uh, different stuff like that. We still don't have our Cutco person. So, <laughs> so if, if you're you know, listening, Cutco right, person, Cutco, like, let's rock and roll, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is like, that's been the elusive one that I've been really trying to, uh, I've had one or two that were really good that made it to final round interviews, but just yeah, didn't yeah. work out or they didn't make it or whatever. But uh, yeah, so that's, that led to us creating the sales team and kind of a long winded way to answer of what we're doing right now with scale and self-publishing school. I love it, man. Now, what, why did you get into self-publishing school? What was the, 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 the is it impetus? I don't even know why yeah. I would say that, but wow, what, <laughs> vocabulary. what, my is goodness, imp- what is the impetus behind self-publishing school? <laughs> <laughs> what the, why the hell did you start it, man? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, I want to know how your vocabulary got so good. I mean, you're writing books over there. What's going on? I should um, publish. I should publish. <laughs> it's called the impetus. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, so for me, I, I wrote and published a, a couple books and they did pretty well. And then people started asking about, hey, how are you doing this? And meanwhile, was where I dropped out of school and I was working on a business that was just totally failing. But people kept asking about books. It's mm-hmm. kind of one of those things where, you know, people can only smack you in the face so many times before you turn around and look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you turn around and look and there's a whole heap of people there. And so for me, Um, it it started as me just getting on the phone with people for for an hour for free, just to be a nice person and be like, Oh, Hey, here's everything you need to do. Good luck. Hope your book does well. And again, just to be a nice person. And, and then finally you do it so many times and people keep asking about it and you're like, hold up, I should be charging for this. (laughs) Let's, let's start. So we started, uh, what ultimately became bestselling book system and, or, or it was called bestselling book system and what ultimately became uh, self-publishing school. And we had our first cohort of about 44 students, I think it was. And then they were successful. Uh, Mm -hmm. And that was, so that was when the light bulb turned on for me. I said, okay, cool. This is not just me anymore. Like I can help other people achieve a similar result. And so then that was when my belief really sparked up. And I mean, as you know, and anyone listening to this, it's it's way easier to sell something if you believe in it. And so once, you know, once, uh, once I believed in the product, then, then it was, it was game on. Yeah. So what, when, um, as you were going through this, when was kind of the, how long into the journey did you realize you wanted to go higher ticket with your offer? It was probably two, maybe three years. Okay. So it was mainly yeah. online selling the marketing funnels, the sales funnels, and then oh, did yeah, you have 100%. people, do you have more support team kind of selling if people needed help? Yeah. And, okay. and actually we didn't even do much of that. Um, we did launches, uh, and we also did webinars and we've just, we've just always really been good at marketing. Uh, and it yeah. was, you know, it was, it was a thousand or two thousand dollar price point. Uh, so, I mean, I think we did, we did like 1.1 million the first year we did, I want to say 2.1 the second year and then maybe 2.8 the third. And I think it was right about somewhere in there. Uh, I said, Hey, I'm going to hire my first salespeople. And then we did that. And then, that like we just slowly started kind of fully changing the model. Yeah. And now your model is primarily just all that, right? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. It's, I mean, we're still really good at marketing and we get hundreds and hundreds of leads a day and uh, this is like total first world problem. Uh, and, and, and a problem that every, uh, uh, every salesperson would die for, but it's like literally one of our problems is that we have too many leads yeah. and, it, well, that's why I like when I get messages from you, it's always like, I need salespeople. That's always, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> always what I get, right? Like, Joe, who do you know? We need yeah. more salespeople. And so the, kind of the structure is we've got five reps and four SDRs. This is the most SDRs we've ever had. Okay. Um, and I think we might be a little bit overbalanced. Uh, um, like we could probably get, go, go to six and three. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, we have with hundreds of leads a day. I mean, it's like, so then, then there's a couple problems to solve, right? Like how do you, okay. How do you make sure that you have the best starting five possible best five people in those seats? Then how do you make sure that, that you're utilizing their time in the best way possible? So we auto DQ about, gosh, 20 to 40% of calls that get. Really? Yeah. Now, um, can you, de- can you tell me about the, the pro- can you tell me about the process from like, are you driving to webinar? Are you driving cold traffic to webinar? What's that look like? Are you doing apps at the front to qualify? And then you're DQing a lot of people there. Where does that all happen? SDR. Yeah. I'm just really curious about your process and yeah. who, you know, what your team's doing here. For sure. So we, um, so it's definitely heavy on webinars. Webinars yeah. are the, the, the center of our business, but I mean, man, we've got, so many marketing assets. So there's quizzes, there's, there's book outline template generator is a really good one recently. Mm. There's all kinds of stuff, man. And so really, yeah. I mean, so we also own selfpublishing.com. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) We have, you know, that's, and then we also there review a bunch of other self-publishing companies. So we give honest third party reviews uh, but then we show up when someone searches their company review. Yeah. Uh, and so then we're showing up in the top three in Google for their term. Uh, and then it's a review and it says, Hey, I'm curious about what company you want to pick. Um, uh, or if you want, you know, click here to book a call with our team and let's talk through your options. So like those are high intent, like high qualified um, people. And then on the flip side, you've got webinar watchers and, and quiz takers are like, you know, Like if you search best self-publishing companies, we have the snippet for that. And then you can see the best. And then there's a quiz to figure out which one's the best company for you or like book outline, uh, best book writing software. Mm. I think we also are the number one of the snippet spot for that. And there's a quiz, like figure out which the book, best book writing software or like take your author DNA quiz. Uh, And so it's a lot of top of funnel uh, assessing and qualifying. And then we, they jump through hoops and then either they'll end up in a webinar They'll end up purchasing a copy of my book published free plus shipping funnel um, or some other like lower ticket stuff, or they'll go on a webinar and book a call. Um, And sometimes if it's a good enough lead source, um, either lead mechanism or lead source, we'll we'll let them go straight to call. Um, But even after they, so basically the the process um, is they book a call through schedule once it's a two-step process. They pick a time and then fill out a, an application. Um, now, and then they press submit. Now, unfortunately, I wish uh, it's infuriating to me that schedule once won't have a dynamic thank you page um, based on uh, an, an option that they select mm-hmm. because it, it's a little bit, and it, it, I don't like the, the process that we currently So it's just an auto redirect to standard page, right? Um, well, no, no, it goes to a thank you page. That's not the issue. The issue is if they select on one of the qualifying questions was just like, how much, how much are you willing and able to invest mm. in the success of your book? There's one that's like $0. I have no money to invest <laughs> in self-publishing school or the success of my book at this time. Yeah. Those folks get auto DQ'd. So yeah. we call it auto disqualified. Yeah. And so basically what happens is on the back end, we've got like a bunch of stuff uh, kind of like uh, duct tape together. Um, and, and basically it'll get, um, if they select that, it'll get deleted off the sales reps calendar. Um, it'll get canceled through schedule once and then they'll get an email and a text that said, Hey, saw you just tried to sit, submit an application. We've got a couple questions about your application. So we've canceled it for now. Um, let's chat. And then we can talk about rescheduling. Yeah. And so that kicks out to an SDR. Um, so then the SDR can say, Hey, let's have a five, That's 10 great. minute conversation, requalify if they do qualify. And then if they do, then they'll put them back on the calendar if they don't, they'll send them a bunch of helpful free resources or, you know, low ticket resources that will help with them. And yeah. so like, that's the kind of the core thing. And then from an SDR perspective, I mean, we've got a bajillion leads coming in every single day. So it, it's that, you know, we do, we're constantly trying to refine and improve that to where it's how do we bubble up the best leads to the top? And that is, you know, we SQLs, MQLs, yep. recency, lead source, all that stuff. And then we bucket those out per SDR and we'll have like 45 minute webinar watchers or like one of our good buckets or if they got, if they uh, did the free plus shipping of my book published, like that's, those are some, so, I mean, we practice what we preach. It's like yep. use books to grow your business. Like that's literally exactly what we're doing. Um, and so um, there's, there's that. And, and so then they, they SDRs call down a list uh, that's 
in an ideal world, um, the hottest leads at the top and, and the most recent leads at the top um, so that they have a, a hopefully a high call, higher call to connect ratio um, and so that they can, they can connect and then, um, book, you know, set um, the sales reps. I love it, man. On your, you mentioning thank you page. I'm just curious, what does the thank you page say? Yeah. So the thank you page, there's a video and it's, it's a video explanation of me setting expectations for the call. Um, so okay. it, it's like, I think it's, I think I asked them to do three things. It's, Hey, number one, if you haven't watched the webinar, there's a link right below this, watch the webinar before your call. Uh, what is it? Number two, make sure this is in your calendar. It, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if this is a, if you got a digital calendar, if you got a physical calendar, whatever you got to do. To Write show, it on your hand. Yeah. <laughs> right, and put it in it your done. calendar and yeah, show yeah. up because we're often, we're usually fully booked. So mm -hmm. if you, you committed to that time and we're going to, so it's a little bit of NLP, but it's like, you know, you committed to that time. We committed to calling you at that time. So I just want to make sure that, you know, you're not taking a slot that someone else would have gladly taken. Um, yeah. So make sure that you show up. And well, I'm then, wondering about, oh, sorry, keep going. Mm -hmm. No, oh, I was going to say, and then I think, there's a, there's a third thing. Um, uh, I'm not remembering right now, but I know that below the video, it's like, there's, there's edifying things like on entrepreneur.com or business insider. There's a podcast episode. There's customer testimonials, um, all that stuff, objection specific ish. Um, and so then that's, that's there. And I want to say like the third thing, Oh, I mentioned like, Hey, um, on this call, you're going to have an opportunity to enroll in self-publishing school. Um, if you decide to do so, like you'll, if you decide on that call, I think, I think I mentioned this, you'll save money on the cost of the program. And then one thing that we also do is we send what we call a pre-frame video. Um, and this automatically happens. Um, and it comes from the rep uh, and from their email. Uh, and it's, Hey, check this out before your call. And there's a picture mm -hmm. of of the video and then that's them introducing themselves as well as setting expectations for the call there. So they've already gotten to know each other I love before it. they hop on the call. I love it. I was just, my, one of the thoughts I was talking to somebody about this the other day is as I'm hearing you talk about, if you're doing DQ right at the, right at the gates, um, maybe have something on that. Thank you page that says, Hey, here's why you might not qualify for a call. Cause now they're yeah. booked, right? If you say, Hey, some people get rejected. So if you yeah. get approved for this call, good news, you're in a good spot. Right. You may get right. rejected. And so you're kind of priming them psychologically that yeah. it's a big win when they get the call. And it's totally. not that big of a soul crusher if they don't get it because you already told them totally. why they wouldn't qualify. Yeah. We've went back and forth. It's like, how do you confuse the least amount of people yeah. <laughs> and also piss off the least amount of people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so I, th I think we've been like kind of back and forth between like, and so one of the things I'll say on the webinar that kind of sets it up a little bit, but uh, to be honest, I don't think we found the perfect solution to this specific problem uh, is I'll just say, Hey, you know, we have about 3000 people every month apply to work <laughs> with us. We only accept a handful of those people, um, roughly about 8%. Um, the acceptance rates for Harvard's about five to six percent. So you could you could say that it's almost as hard to get into self publishing school as <laughs> which is I love are. that. See, right. I love that. You know, I wish so more people did this. and there's social yeah. proof, and it's a hundred percent true. And yeah. like we we DQ and we send away a bunch of people. So we're we're trying to, and I think this is what will continue to evolve in our sales process is having it more and more like a selection process mm -hmm. um, versus. And so we're as we just continue to tighten this up it's becoming more and more like okay and that's in the expectation setting piece mm -hmm. um in the in the first five minutes of the call for the rep is if you qualify um to work with us and if you're a fit we'll talk about what that looks like so really kind of like push versus pull a lot of selling and consultative selling yeah i mean i remember I, well a few years ago you posted something on looking for salespeople, and that was you had a, you posted a video and i know with your backdrop there and talking about what you were looking for in salespeople, and, and you really set that <laughs> tone of like you know what your expectations were for the, right. the quality and sort of the intention the authenticity and that's what yes. it was really struck me as like this is you know this is something that not everybody's doing and there's a lot of confusion in hiring salespeople, and there's oh a lot of gosh, there's yeah. a lot of weirdness in it and you probably yeah. have had some crazy application. You want to talk about maybe a couple of the, talk about some of the great people that you've been able to bring on and maybe a couple like war stories of like, Oh my God, I can't believe that happened. Cause this yeah, is, well, you know, I want to, I want to <laughs> juxtapose those things, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, my philosophy and I've said this for years is don't be a salesy weirdo. You know, that's, <laughs> that's the original quote to me. No, I'm just kidding. You made, I know uh, you made that up and I, and I copied it and I made a poster and that's uh, so deal with it. <laughs> 
Oh man, no, I'm just messing. I, yeah, I mean, I think we've learned a lot of hard lessons uh, along the way, and then also been very fortunate to hire great people, man. I mean, yeah. it, it, we have a very rigorous sales process or interview process. I mean, it's just we send people through the ringer. Uh, and can you describe uh, that a bit? Yeah, of course. Without giving um, it, don't give it any secrets, but just describe it. Yeah, <laughs> and so I've got, um, and what might be helpful for people as well is there's, I've got two videos on um, my YouTube channel, Seven Figure Principles Show. One is how to hire your first salesperson, uh, and the other one is uh, the A player hiring process. So, like those two will be super helpful. The long and short of it is, I mean, it's attitudinal hiring, so behavior based hiring. Uh, yeah. It's also so there's 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 screening interview. There's kind of more, um, there, there's like your focus interview, there's a top grading interview. And then a lot of cases we want to hear them take some calls. And so we'll send them some calls uh, and hear how they take calls and like stuff like that. Uh, and so we just kind of send people through the ringer um, from that standpoint so that we make sure we really nail the hiring process. Um, and then I would say one of the things we've learned, and I think this can be a bit counterintuitive, for some people is like, I try not to hire from the internet marketing industry. Uh, it's, I, I try to hire outside of that yeah. if at all possible. Uh, and I think a lot of times the reps that are like, I'm an amazing high ticket closer. And I was like, just going to ask you about what do you think about all this one call closer, high ticket closer. It's, I, I just it's call it the, the sales. Dude. I call it sales bro mentality. It's it just really all these is. people that it's brutal, right? It's brutal. It's cutthroat. It's boiler room mentality. And it's, it's those people aren't going to fit like yeah. they'll be out really quick because it's a consultative sales process and we care about the success of our students. So it's Crazy, not like, right? it, yeah, it's a wild concept. <laughs> and then when you care about them, they send you more customers. Yeah. Like, it's crazy, right? Flywheel, um, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, so I think just the whole high ticket clothes are like most of it's BS and, and people say they're making a bunch of money. They're not. They, people it's a boiler room it's like churn and burn mentality mm -hmm. and you look under the hood and you've got people promising like oh you're gonna come here and make 200 grand your first year and it's like oh no your average tenure of a rep is nine months because mm -hmm. you're churning people out and they made money two months really good money for two like two of those nine months and they just they extrapolated that like, saying that one month yeah. that was good yeah, could 100%. have been five years of this you're like no it's, i made nothing <laughs> so we we've we you yeah. get enamored by that and that certainly happened to me yeah uh, multiple times and then you, you just don't make that mistake again and so i want people that are humble hungry and smart <laughs> uh, and that that are, are you know are not not in the internet marketing industry not they wouldn't call themselves a high ticket closer any of that crap that and, and oftentimes like they, they are they're in a high velocity high volume uh lower average order value mm -hmm. because that's what we found too is is when someone is used to selling these huge deals then they it, they just think it's below them to sell mm -hmm. you know solid size deals like ours like four grand five grand six grand like they're used to selling these uh, you know crazy like 10, 15, $20,000 packages, which sure. in a lot of contexts, like, cool, that's what, whatever the value is, but it's yeah. like these propped up, get, get rich quick, kind of like 10 K high ticket off or whatever. And it's just, uh, so that th those don't, those people don't work well, but the people who are used to like, maybe they would sold at a car dealership, maybe like gym sales, maybe it was, they were in a high volume, uh, low average order value. Then they're like, Oh my gosh, what do you, I wake up every day and have ca calls on my calendar. Like right? that's amazing. <laughs> I get to work from home. <laughs> like I get <laughs> like it, it's average 4,000 on deals. Like I, then they really appreciate it where I think if, if at least in my experience, if they're coming yeah. from another place, they're not. And your team, your team's doing well. Uh, like you have a team that's pretty, pretty st structured and been there for a while with you. Right. Most of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have good longevity, which is which is nor well. not normal, yeah. right, on the internet side. <laughs> and like, uh, and and there's still like every now and then I I see th this happens is I think um, people get en enamored by the shiny, like yeah. oh, I'm gonna go over there to these like people that everyone thinks are like a big deal and they're talking about sale. It's usually the people that are like at a big level training sales 
Um, yeah. I could say multiple names and I'm sure I don't yeah, even have to we, say those names. We don't have to you say those names. You guys about. don't know who we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but they see that and it's yeah. like, that's the sales bro boiler room. Like, oh, I'm going to go there and I'm going to close. Yeah. Up I'm going to crush it. I'm going to kill like, it all, bro. Yeah. It's yeah. Just like, okay, go for cool. it. Look, th- those folks aren't going to last. They're looking at the one year. They're looking at the two year timeline. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think the biggest mistake a lot of people in general make, entrepreneurs make, leaders make, um, and also salespeople. It's yeah. like they look on too short of a horizon and it's like the grass is always greener, uh, kind of free agent mentality, um, yeah. which I think really like sometimes we've lost some really talented people to that exact thing. It's like, hey, look, the grass isn't greener. Well, it's just like anything. It's uh, especially right now, we talk about what's happening around the world. People are, you know, we talked about before we jumped on here, the, the idea of pivoting. You know, if you're going to go after something that's meaningful, um, that's valuable, that supports your values, your vision, your mission, it takes time uh, and it takes commitment and it takes, you know, risk on both sides. And if you're thinking, I'm just going to keep changing and go and jump from job to job and be a high ticket closer, you're going to be, you're going to get beaten up, eaten up and chewed up by the system, right? So maybe, let me ask you this question here is um, somebody's like, let's say there's somebody listening. Um, there, there should be one person listening. If the one person's listening and uh, they're authentic and they really want to do meaningful work and they hear, you know, somebody like you and just what you're explaining, they're like, wow, that really sounds like a good place to work. That sounds like a good sales thing. That's somewhere I could hang my hat. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'll clean the virtual toilets. I don't care. You know, I'm going to come and go work for somebody like Chandler. Uh, what would you say that, that, how should they approach that to kind of stand out? Um, to be able to, you know, differentiate themselves from everybody that's out there and what do they need to do to really, you know, make the most of that job and not drive you crazy? <laughs> right? Oh man. It's a big question, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so and it's funny cause I literally just at the time of recording this released this video two days ago of him on how to land your dream job. And it's, mm. it's, it's, it's a lot of that. I mean, the good news is good fundamental, good sales fundamentals are exactly what you're going to do to land the job. Yeah. Send the handwritten note, reach, try, you know, go around the gatekeeper, <laughs> reach <laughs> out directly, um, show experience and show stats. I think uh, when I'm interviewing people, they get so hung up on uh, selling themselves <laughs> in kind of a bad way, like, and, and yeah. not a good way. It's like they're selling the skill set and, in a lot of cases, I'm like, cool. I want to like, I want to get into the numbers really quickly, and then zoom out and poke around with skill set. And until I understand the numbers, it's like, okay, cool. So it's like, okay, what percent were you in the last and your last in the company? How many reps were they? Where were you, where did you rank? Okay, the company before that. How many reps were they? What did you rank? How many calls were you doing per day? What was your average sales value? What was your like? I just want to rattle through all that stuff. And then that's going to, because past experience is the best indicator of future success. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it's like, for me, I want to, I want to see that very quickly. Uh, and it's like, okay, cool. Where were you at? Um, and if you're bottom quarter of the sales organization, shoot, if you're anywhere, but like top 10%, we're, we're not going to talk probably. Um, or like the conversation went in quickly. Um, so like your results speak for themselves. Um, I, I don't like, when people speak poorly about the previous organization, that's usually a sign that it was, it was a them problem, not the organization problem. And so I'm going to be the person that they're speaking poorly about. In the You're future. the next one. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> well, you without, failed seven, them. Yeah. without exception, that's been yeah. something. And then to answer your second part of your question, how do you keep, um, how do you keep from driving me or the sales manager crazy is yeah. be a team player, man. It's like, the people who come in like that, which we've, we've had, we've been fortunate to have some really good ones. It's just like, I want to make the team win. I'm going to be competitive, but supportive. I'm going to like, I'm going to challenge everyone to get better. uh, And I'm going to bring an energy and a a level of excellence. And what we call best is the standard. It's one of our core values. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to bring a standard and I'm going to be a standard setter uh, and a standard raiser uh, and not someone, you know, not someone who's, entitled, not someone who's like, like if you're a sales rep, do do not (laughs) dog the SDR. Like it's very easy to be there. Everything, man. These are crappy, crappy sets. And like, it's like, I've seen that happen. It's just like, you're an idiot. Like, what are you doing? You're literally biting off the hands that's feeding you. Uh, 
and, and it's like, it's not healthy for the team. Like, so then there becomes this weird, like, oh, SDR versus rep. And like, we're second class citizens. And we're just like, need to bow at the feet of the reps, which is totally not true. Like, they're just, the well, you build a business. Road. Yeah, you build a business around all of the people and all of the, the service delivery, the support people, the IT team, yes. everybody's yes. on the same team. There's a reason all these moving pieces are there and you sell as an organization. If one yeah. piece doesn't work, yes. then you don't have a job sales rep. Yeah. That's how this goes. Yeah. You, you win as a team and you lose yeah, it as a absolutely. team. Absolutely. So I think yeah. that's like, it's if great someone feedback, comes yeah. in with a team first mentality, they're, they're, they're growth oriented, they're coachable all day long. <laughs> like yeah. that is just a dream. Yeah. It's a dream. I love them. And I used to, well, I used to tell people my, like I had a team of 50 reps and I say, you know, we put you in two categories, those that don't know how, and those that don't want to. And if you don't know how we'll teach you, man, if you don't want to, you can want to, you can get the fuck out. That's just <laughs> it. And I just, I'm like, I want to help you guys win, but not if you don't want to be here. And if you're going to yeah. do all the stuff to make this really difficult, don't, don't stay. Right. Yeah. We don't like, it's just, it's the worst when you have a rep that you're just dragging through the mud, right? Yeah. Like it's brutal. Cause you want them to succeed. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you want, want them to see them and personally and, and professionally, right? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And your, yeah. your, your reputation, like what, from everything I see, what you do and the clients you have and where you're going with things, you want reps that rep, like that's your first thing that's happening. And you get a bad taste in your mouth. You, it's really hard to undo that, man, because your whole oh, company 100%. becomes the salesy weirdo, right? Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Well, I stole your quote. Yeah. But, <laughs> 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 so uh let, let me let's uh, uh we'll wrap this up here i want to maybe um let's let me think about a good question here what would you, what tips would you give sort of any kind of company like there's a lot of people that are going to listen that you know are in a similar situation where they say i need to bring on some salespeople. i don't know how this sounds great but they've maybe been burned by bringing on salespeople in the past, this whole bro mentality, it gets people a lot of high, yeah. high level promises and maybe spending too much money on reps. How would you help somebody that wants to make that transition from online to start to bring on some sales, whether they do it themselves or they bring on a team? What, would, what should they think of first in order to get, you know, get through this big hurdle? Yeah, I'll tell you the thing that I thought of was who versus how. <laughs> it's how we tackle any problem in business is who's done this before? not mm -hmm. how do we do this and if we figure out the who they know the how um and so i, I mean i think it's guys like you joe and like learn directly from people who have done it and then mm -hmm. literally do exactly what they did right <laughs> not a crazy concept but that's what we were so I, immediately i was like okay cool how did tony robbins build a sales team how did uh, dave ramsey build a sales team how did john c maxwell build a sales team like at scale what does this look yeah. like what do they call their sales reps how do they comp their sales reps where do they recruit from? Like they have spent a lot of money and a lot of time figuring that out. I'm going to go find exactly what they did. And then I'm going to get on the phone with a bunch of people asking questions and stuff like that. Um, and so learn from people who have done it. And I mean, obviously this is something you do all day, every day. So if uh, you know, I'd, I'd work with somebody like you, uh, and, and learn Aww. the hard way <laughs> or, or, or learn the easy way. Not the I was hard like, way. it is, it's the hard way. We'll make it, we'll make it simple. It ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> Work with Joe and it'll be harder. Is yeah. It's good. Your life out. is worse, but you know what? I'll send an invoice. So there's <laughs> that, right. <laughs> and you pay up front. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, all right, man. Well, I, you know, anything else that you want to add to this? Cause I think this, this was gold, dude. You crushed it. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, um, if you want to learn how to write a book, grab my book published. Um, check out the resources that we have on, on, on the site. Like we've got our main pillar, kind of how to write a book post that has the book outline template generator I mentioned, free copy of the book, webinar. If you're someone that wants to use a book to stand out, either in your sales role, in your business, whatever, um, we're, we're here to help. And we got a ton of resources uh, that'll help with that. I love it. And what I would say, anybody, you know, if you're thinking about whether you're trying to sell, uh, whether you're trying to build an organization, go and check out all this stuff. Just, you know, like as a swipe file to see somebody that's really kicking ass and doing things right. I really, really just love the way that you're approaching all this stuff. I want to thank you for joining me today. I'm going to give you a big fist bump. Mm, what's up, yeah. homie? And I really love what you've been talking about. Thanks for joining us. And I know everybody got a ton of value. Thanks so much, brother. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for checking out today's podcast. You know, whether you're just starting out or you have decades of experience, it's conversations exactly like these that can help you get an edge today and in the long term. 
You can also find me on my blog at joegerard.ca and saleshero.academy.com. Make sure you share this with your friends and colleagues as well. You know, selling is heroic because nothing happens in a business unless people buy from you. This is why I want to help you just simplify, have fun, and grow. Let's not only talk about these ideas, but take action and do our best work together. When you invest in yourself and just continuously learn how to sell the right way, you are a hero for your customers and for yourself. So join me next time for another episode of the Sales Hero Podcast.